JavaScript sucks. JavaScript rocks. But the problem is, building full stack applications in JavaScript has always been super painful. It's all about piecing together different puzzle pieces, different libraries, then doing a million different syntaxes together and putting something together. This has been the norm now, so that a lot of developers nowadays think if they start with a Next.js application and use their API route or API folder, they can build a full stack framework that way. And they are so, so, so wrong. Today, I'll give you a tour of what full stack development in JavaScript looks like using Adonis.js. And what's great about Adonis.js, which is actually a port of Laravel into JavaScript, is that you can use it with your favorite uh, front-end framework, whether it's uh, React, uh, Svelte, uh, Solid, whatever it is. So you don't have to go out of that comfort zone, but you will get every single thing that you want to do in one system altogether. Today, I'll show you how you can build this super simple site as an example, and we are going to roll our own Oath. it's not that difficult where you can actually just sign up to our website here and then i can sign up like that and then i can log in and then these are the details of my uh my account this is my email i can log out i can go back to log in uh yep here we go and this is so simple to get this started and running in this video i'll run you through how you can get to this point and there will be a lot more details in the blog post link below let's do this all right right now i have this adonis js application running using inertia and react to get to this point is very simple you just run one command and you follow the prompts and you get it set up exactly like i have it right here you can follow the details in the blog below now with this running the first thing the first thing that you have to do whenever you want to enable a user login is to actually initialize the user model in your database um, when you do this from the prompts you basically come up with the specific user table we have this migration to create the user table and i want to show you the most minimal setup ever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically uh, delete this uh, full name column here because we don't really need it and then i'm also going to delete the full name column uh, from from the model itself so i'm again i'm going for the most minimal setup that I can get. After this, what I have to do is basically run the migrations. So I'm going to run uh, migrations run right there. And that means that I have initialized the shape of this table into my database. In other words, if I look at this uh, table in Postico, I can see that this is exactly the shape that we want from database, just the email and password ID, created at and updated at, and that's about it. All right, now our database layer is ready. Now this template that I started with is using inertia to render React on the server side and send it to the front end. I wanna show you how that works a little bit just before we move on and start making our applications. Let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna show you quickly how this actually works. How do we get this home page to render that way? If you open up the routes file where you specify all the routes in your application, you can see this line which basically says, on visiting the root route, what we're going to do is basically render inertia, render an inertia page called home, and we are passing some props into the inertia page. If I open up this home inertia page, I can see that I have props, which is the version, whatever I'm gonna send from there, and the version here is six, and that's how I get the value and render it in the HTML right there that means if i were to change this to 20 and save this and go back i refresh this i can see 20 right there and that's how it works on the very basic level we have routes and that route specify th things like what happens where are your pages and everything it will also specify our api our auth routes and everything and we can use this render inertia function to render uh, tsx files right away. All right, no offense, but I really don't like the way this home page really looks. So I'm going to replace that with something that looks much more suited to what we're trying to do here. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the old CSS. And I could do this in the app.tsx file right there by removing this app.tsx, the import that came with the template. After this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the inertia layout with edge file. This file is extremely simple, similar to the underscore document file that comes in Next.js. In that file, I'm going to import basically Pico CSS. Pico CSS is a very simple and small library that have basic uh, styling to simple like uh, semantic natural uh, native HTML elements. So if you put a button, it will look good. If you put a container, it will look good. If you put a div, it will look decent and so on. 
cool. The second thing I'm going to do. And then finally, in this uh, home page, I'm going to change things quite a bit. So I'm going to do, first of all, I need the link. I know that I need a link, so I'm going to import that from Inertia. After this, I'm going to replace everything inside of this container uh, with a navigation. And then after the navigation, I'm also going to add um, some H group right there. So this H group will go inside, uh, outside, outside of the nav. That's it. And if I save this and go back here, I can see this looking much different. This is looking really good. Now we have one link to join us, which is here. I will go to the sign up page and another link for login, uh, which will go to the login page. Right now we don't have either, so let's build it. All right, so the first step to building these pages is to add a route that will basically render those files. So to do that, I'm going to go back into my routes.ts file right here. I'm going to just add some kind of like grouping with a comment there. I'm saying these are the public views. You will see how this file will grow with time later. And then I'm going to add two routes here, one route for sign up and one route for login. Again, notice we are using the render inertia uh, function right there. And this function will basically render uh, a page that is inside of inertia folder, inside pages folder that matches the name that you pass in here. Currently, we don't even have sign up or login pages. So let's create them right now. So I'm going to basically touch uh, inertia pages. I'm going to touch two files, sign up and login.tsx. Nice. So now I have two files, one sign up and one login. So let's open up the sign up page and let's build this page together. All right. Building the sign up page is actually extremely simple. Remember, this is just normal React really that gets rendered on the server uh, using inertia and gets sent to the client. So I'm going to have a function. This has to be the default export function called sign up. And in there, I'm going to return a main uh, div. And this main uh, element will have some styling there to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm going to have, have a title on the head called sign up. And then I'm just adding an H1 here saying join our community. And then after this, I'm following this up with a form. This is an HTML form. I'm not doing anything crazy here. I'm just have one handler for submit, one handler for change, and then a values uh, state which has email and password in it. So let's add this one use state uh, statement here. Values will have an email and password. And then we need two handlers, one for change looks like this and one for submit looks like this. Now notice this specific line here, which is very important. Uh, this line post the values of the form to API auth sign up, which we currently don't have this route. We will create that very soon. Now, finally, let's uh, finish this up with adding uh, our imports. Make sure that the, uh, that the server is running right there. And then if I go back to this page here and click on join us, I can see this is the page that we have just built. Currently, if I try to submit this form, nothing will happen uh, because that, um, that basically a route does not exist. So let's actually show you this. If I do this, it will just tell me this route does not exist. So let's build this route right now. All right, now let's head back to our routes file to add two routes, one for auth sign up and one for auth login, which you'll use in the login page later. Going back to our routes file here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of comment there to say that this is going to be a group for the API routes that we're going to use. Now, in Adonis, you can group different routes together to add a middleware or to add a prefix. In this case, I'm just going to add a prefix in this case. So I'm going to have a route, uh, a route group that's prefixed by API. So it's gonna everything inside this group is gonna be API slash blah, 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 blah. And then inside that I'm gonna add another group and this group is gonna be prefixed with oath. Now, because we are not savages, uh, I'm not gonna just write the logic right there. We have to have a controller. So now when you basically uh, post to API auth login, we are going to invoke the auth controller login, login method. And if you post to API auth sign up, we're going to invoke the auth controller uh, sign up method. Currently, we don't even have that controller. Uh, so let's make it. Thankfully, uh, Adonis comes with this very simple uh, CLI, which is basically ACE. So ACE make controller auth, and that will give me the controller right there. So you can see we have made a controller into the controllers folder, auth controller.ts. What I'm going to do now is basically import this controller right here. And my work here is done. It's complaining because the login uh, method does not really exist on the controller yet, which we are going to fix right now. So let's do the sign up method first and then use it and go back to do the login method. All right, so I have the auth controller file open right there. And like I mentioned earlier, the issue is that we don't have these methods inside the auth controller. So let's add a sign up method. This is very simple. It's an async uh, function that is going to hook up into the HTTP context. We're going to use the auth, the response and the request. Now, HTTP context is a context basically that expands throughout all your application. And it's really, really, really powerful. Later, I'll show you how we can even use that to send some data into your front end templates as well. So it's very powerful. We'll talk about that later. But for now, 
Uh, what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to create a user. So we're going to call user. This is the model user dot create and request body is going to take the request body, all of it, and then smash it into the create method of the user model. And then after this, we need to log in that user. So I'm going to use the auth uh, context here, auth use web, log in the, this specific user that we just created. And then finally, redirect to dashboard. A couple of those cleanups here. I'm going to re-import this HTTP context and I have to import uh, the user model itself. Itself. Cool. If I save this and go back here, I can refresh this page. Actually, the server is not running. Uh, so let's run the server. I can go back here and refresh this page here. And then I can actually sign up now, ma.ma.com, and then a password. And then I'm going to be taken back to dashboard. Now, because right now we don't have this dashboard route, but you can tell right now what happened is that we first created this user. And then after creating this user, uh, we signed the user in. And then we might we move them later uh, to the dashboard route which does not exist. So let's create one right now. All right, I'm going to head back to my routes file to add this dashboard route right there. Now, one thing that's important to notice about this dashboard route is that this is going to be an auth protected route. The way you do that in, um, in Adonis is basically by using the middleware called auth. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, just to make things a little bit more clearer and nicer for me, I'm going to add a comment here that these are going to be my auth views right there. And then exactly like I did before, I'm going to add a router group and this group will use a middleware called auth. Again, this happens, uh, comes out of the box automatically with, with Adonis. So you get your user in the context automatically and you get your auth middleware right there also automatically, which is very, very uh, easy to use and very good to have. Now, after this, what I'm going to do inside of this group, I'm going to add a route uh, that when you visit dashboard, basically render the uh, page called dashboard inside of the inertia pages uh, folder, which currently does not exist. I'm going to import this middleware right there. So let's actually create this right there. So I'm going to go here and what I'm going to do is basically touch uh, basically a page called the dashboard dash uh, dash dashboard TSX dashboard TSX right there. Cool. And uh, now I do have this dashboard. Uh, sorry, that's not the right file. And now I do have this dashboard TSX file right there. It's empty. So let's build it together. All right. Now the dashboard page is really, really simple. It's a simple react component. And again, it's a default exported function. And we will have this part here that says props, which will get the user right there. Now I won't show you how this will come so far, but imagine this, that we, we what we want to have is that underneath all our OS views, we should have the logged in user property right there, passed in as props. And it's very easy to do this in Inertia. In Adonis, yes, I'll show you how to do this afterwards. Uh, basically, we're going to return uh, just a React fragment. I'm going to add a head with the title of dashboard and a container. Inside this container, I'll basically just uh, add the navigation and then I'll add here the user email. And then I will follow that with a button for the user to log out. We don't have this logout uh, path just yet. We'll create it afterwards. And then finally, I'm just going to add an H1 says, the login user detail and I will stringify the user object itself uh, and I will show it there as I've shown you in the beginning of the video and then finally just some some imports now I will save this and then go back to the browser as such and if I refresh this now okay we haven't started the server so let's do that npm run dev all right, I'll go here. And if I refresh this now, I can see that there's an issue here. Uh, props user email. I basically, we can't really read user right now. And the reason for this is, as it stands right now, uh, this dashboard component, this page is not really receiving the user props. In order for us to do that, if I look into uh, config inertia file here, I will have this property called shared data. So I will see this shared data here. What this does is basically, it allows us to pass uh, properties and data from the HTTP content Context that lives inside of Adonis to every single inertia page that we can render. In other words, this is basically your global state and it's amazing. So what we can do here is that basically we can pass the user right away. So I will say that the user is going to come from the context and then what we return is ctx.auth and then if the user exists, we're going to pass it by and that's about it. Awesome. If I go back here and refresh this page, I should be able to find the logged in user detail right there. Notice I didn't have to play around with global state libraries. I didn't have to play around with Redux. Didn't have to set up anything. This just comes out of the box. Fantastic. Now, moving on after this, we have this logout uh, button here. If I click this button right now, we don't have this uh, route at all. So let's create this route. All right, let me head back to my routes file to add this basic route, which will allow the user to log out. So going back into the routes file right there, all I need to do is basically just add this line that says whenever there is a request that goes to API auth logout, then we have to trigger uh, the auth controller logout method. 
logout method. That, that's it. And basically right now it's complaining because there is no logout method on the auth controller, which is easy peasy. Let's fix that. Going into the auth controller, all I need to do is add this method called logout. And this method is extremely simple. We just need to add uh, at auth .use web, which is basically the method of auth because Adonis supports multiple methods uh, to do the auth. Auth use web and then log out the current logged in user. And then finally, we're going to redirect the customer or the user to the home uh, homepage. Let me just uh, give a very quick uh, refresh uh, to the server. If I go back here, if I click on the logout part now, I have been logged out and I am now landing on the homepage as exactly we just wrote. Fantastic. Now, the next step we are going to do is basically click on this login page uh, to go to an actual login page. Right now, we don't have any login part. Uh, so let's go back and add that and basically have something to trigger because right now our login page is empty. Let's do that. All right. So I'm back into the login page. Right now, this login page is completely empty. So let's build it together. It's extremely simple and very, very similar to the sign up page that we had before. Again, it's a simple React component. I'm going to return uh, a main uh, main element. Element. This one will be the container of everything. Inside there, I'll have a head with the title of login, and then an H1 says login to your account, and then a form. It's exactly almost copy and paste that we get from the signup page. It basically has a submit handler, a change handler, and then some values in the state. Very easy peasy. A use state statement that has email and password, a handler for change, a handler for submit. And notice this, we are posting to an API of login, which doesn't exist right now, which we'll create right after this, and then my basic imports right there. Cool. That means if I go back into my browser here and refresh this page, I should be, in theory, be able to log in. I actually shouldn't be able to log in because there's basically no login method on the auth controller, which is very easy. Just to explain this, if you go back to routes, we do have uh, this basic uh, route here. A route exists, but we're not actually doing anything in the route. And the reason for that is that uh, the auth controller does not have any login method. We have the sign up method right there. We have the logout method right here. So let's do the login method together. All right, now I think this is the part that really scares people off from running their own oath because maybe they think that the login method is extremely difficult to handle or something. It's very, very simple to do in Adonis, as you will see right now. So all I need to do is add this login method. Inside the login method, I know that the request body will have an email and password inside there. I will use those email and password to trigger this method called verify credentials. This is coming from the user model, and it's an extremely handy uh, method provided by Adonis for us to simply just check if this user exists or not. This function will actually throw an error, which I'm ignoring in this case. If everything is correct, I'm going to get the user back, the, basically the correct user back who's trying to log in, and I'm going to log in this user using uh, the method of web from my oath, uh, my oath context. Happy days. And then finally, if everything is correct, I'm going to redirect to the dashboard. Let's give uh, the, rest, uh, the, the server a very quick restart. If I go back here and then try to log in again with the same credentials, I will be able to log in. And that's it. So now I have an app where I can log out, I can log in, um, I go here again, as we just did, and I can log out again, I can join up, and then add another account like this, and I can log in with that account as well. And that's it, really. This was a very quick rundown on how you can basically build this full stack application where you basically run your own oath. And it's extremely simple. And the whole idea is that it's very easy to start with the real full stack development in JavaScript. A lot of people are bashing on JavaScript for not having this experience, but it's actually already there and it's extremely simple. There's a lot of more details that I didn't show you in this video because it's a quick rundown. If you go back to uh, to the blog post links below, you can see a lot more details. Adonis is a fantastic framework that you can build very complicated applications with very easily and very fast. I really hope you check it out. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.